Today. Hey, guess what? Guess what? I got fired. Woohoo! This is Checkpoint. Welcome to Checkpoint, where, don't worry, we are not going to E3. And not just because we weren't invited, we didn't want to go. It's a moral stance. Yeah. Following up from last week, Precursor Games has decided to cancel the Kickstarter for Shadow of the Eternals so they can take a deep breath, regroup, and relaunch their fundraiser in a couple weeks. Since the first one only raised $128,000 of their $1.35 million goal, I don't see how killing their momentum and trying again is going to help at all. In their message regarding the shutdown, they said, We have seen more support from our community than we had ever hoped for. Which must be false, because they actually only got about 10% of the support they hoped for, but yeah, it's more than we thought they'd get, too. Rejoice! EA is dropping its unpopular online pass program. This means that whole, you can't play this used game online unless you pay $10, is dead. According to Jeff Brown, EA's VP of Corporate Communications, although the program generated over $15 million, the revenue didn't offset the decrease in online players or the bad PR the online pass system generated. This seems minor, but for EA, this is actually pretty monumental. Up until today, the company has lived inside a protective bubble where any complaint, legitimate or not, has been quickly dismissed as haters hatin'. Turns out, sometimes haters are gonna make some valid points. A Super Nintendo emulator for the Oculus Rift is being worked on. While it might seem counterintuitive, it actually is. The virtual reality emulator is really just a 2D SNES screen floating in a gray void. And sure, this gives you the chance to jump and make Mario jump in front of your TV again. We feel that this was a missed opportunity not to have the SNES on a TV in a 1990s bedroom, complete with TMNT poster, Power Rangers action figures, and acid wash jeans. This can be the true future of the Oculus Rift. Not only will developers create the game, but the environment the game is meant to be played in. Man, don't you just look at your favorite mobile games and say, mm, this is pretty sweet, but what would really improve the experience is a control system that required me to flail about wildly while playing. No? What's that you say? No one's ever said that? Wrong. At least one marketing executive did, because Doodle Jump is coming to connect. For just $5, the game will allow you to land directly on someone's foot as you hop from platform to platform, and then follow it up with a swift slap to the face as you flap your arms to fly across the screen. Doodle Jump Connect, the must-have summer game for feuding siblings. A big balance update was released for Halo 4 last week, and by balance update, we mean everything is more powerful now. The guns are more powerful, they fire faster, the Warthog's chain gun is getting a 35% damage boost. Everyone even runs faster now. The only nerf seems to be a slight reduction to the auto-aim range, but even then it sounds like they're turning Halo 4 into a Benny Hill slapstick montage. Getting laid off is the worst, unless you work for OMG Pop, the company, which we will remind you, Zynga bought for $180 million last March, has been completely shut down. Now, going from $180 million to zilch in 15 months should be depressing, but the OMG Pop crew celebrated their demise with a party that included music, booze, and the ritual sacrifice of Zynga branded hoodies. Now, a lot of people have been using this story as an excuse to take cheap shots at Zynga, but I'd like to take a second to commend them. After all, most people are sad when they lose their jobs, so it's a pretty significant accomplishment to improve someone's day by firing them. I bet I could do it. Kathleen, you're off the case. What? Oh, come on. You're only doing this because I'm a loose cannon. But you know what? I get the job done. Who gave you a gun? Coming up, not going to E3? In London? Why not go to E2 in Soho? It's just like E3, but with less ease. Mm.